Hey everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. For today's Five on Friday, I'm going to bring to you my top five books of April. So as a quick reminder, this will not include five star predictions, seasonal covers or rereads because, well, I already know I'm going to love rereads and the others have dedicated videos to them. These are the top five books I read in April that do not have dedicated videos of their own. So first up, I have The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Stephen Brusati. And I gave this book five stars. This is a nonfiction that is about the dinosaurs. It literally talks how dinosaurs came to be, what they went through, the different kinds of dinosaurs and where you would find them. And well, what happened to them? I absolutely adored this book. I was invested from the word go. I thought that Stephen did a great job laying things out. The audiobook was fantastic. I would recommend listening to it if you can, because it really added to my experience of reading this. It was just absolutely fascinating to learn more about dinosaurs and it it was a really, really enjoyable read and I'm loving that I got to learn some stuff in this one because it's been a while since I've learned something new about the dinosaurs and I can absolutely unequivocally say I did so in this. My next book is another nonfiction and that's Becoming by Michelle Obama. This also got five stars. This is obviously her memoir. I listened to the audiobook. Again, it is her doing the narration which just again adds to it and I thought it was absolutely fascinating getting to see Michelle's life from her perspective. It made her feel really down to earth reminded me that she is a human being that just because she was our first lady did not mean that she was not just you know a regular person. It was interesting to see what it was like to be the president's wife from again her perspective. There were lots of interesting tidbits like just like, for instance, at the very beginning of the book, we see her talk about a scene where she's at home by herself for the first time since she left the White House. The kids are gone, Barack is out, and it's just her, and it's quiet, which it never was at the White House because there was always something going on or somebody nearby. The Secret Service doesn't need to be as closed in, and it was just so weird for her to have this quiet, to be able to make her own food, which is something she didn't get to do in the White House, to go out back with the dogs and have the dogs react to having neighbors, which was weird for them. And to me, that was just so indicative of I've never really thought about the idea of what it was like to be, you know, in the White House and then have to go back to living a somewhat normal life. I've always thought about it the other way, about how jarring it must be to go from this somewhat normal life to living in the White House, um, as opposed to thinking about it from the other way around. But that that was interesting. And yeah, there were just other moments like um, there was a school shooting that happened. I'm trying to remember which one. It's sad that there are so many that I don't remember. It might have been Sandy Hook. Um, and just how she had to have a moment with Barack where they weren't the president and the first lady. They were parents who had young kids and were mourning along with the Sandy Hook I'm going to assume Sandy Hook, uh, parents, or were sympathetic and imagining, oh my God, what if that had been my kid? And it, it again brought home the idea that at the end of the day, despite being president and first lady, they were human beings who had emotions and were parents and were partners and were kids. You know, they, they had parents. Like, it was just absolutely fascinating to see things from her perspective and be reminded that there was an actual human being behind whatever I saw on TV. So, that was quite fascinating. I'd highly recommend getting the audiobook if you can. And this was just a, a, a brilliant book that, again, reminded me that these people you see on TV are actually real human beings. In the same vein, the next book I'm going to talk about is Spare by Prince Harry. And again, listen to the audiobook read by Prince Harry himself. Absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend it. And this is another one where you're reminded that just because he's Prince Harry does not mean that he is not also a human being. He was somebody's child. He lost his mom. And despite being Prince Harry, that does not change the fact that he was a little kid who just lost his mom. He has a complicated relationship with his brother. He has a complicated relationship with his father. I think that's something a lot of people can relate to. He talks about mental health things that he has gone through. And I really identified with that as somebody who also has anxiety. And it was just interesting to see how he kind of laid that out and how relatable it made him. Because again, I think sometimes you forget when you see these people that they're actual human beings and he does a really good job of laying out you know his life story and all of the things he went through and how a lot of it despite being 
Prince Harry was normal. Was normal things that everybody kind of has to go through. Um, it was interesting to see what he enjoyed doing. I, I learned a lot about some of the stuff that wasn't necessarily advertised about him. Like I knew he had been in the military. I knew he had served and actually seen action. But like I didn't know about his love for Africa and the friends that he made there who don't really give a crap that he's Prince Harry. And I'm really glad that he has people in his life who just see Harry the person as opposed to the prince. It was interesting seeing how him and Meghan met and fell in love. I thought that was a really sweet story. I thought it was heartbreaking seeing how much he struggled with his family and the pressures that come with being a prince and some of the political games that are played there. I thought it was interesting to see, in his own words, how he struggled with his mom's death and the things that he went through and how he viewed that. It was just an absolutely fascinating look. And just like with Michelle Obama, it really reminded me that there was a human being behind this title. So highly, highly recommend that. And I could totally see that being one of my favorite books I've read all year. Like by the end of the year, I, I think it is my favorite book I've read this year so far. So we'll see if it holds up to the end of the year. Then I read Demigods and Magicians by Rick Riordan, and this is a companion novel to the Percy Jackson and the Kang Chronicle series. So it features Percy Jackson and some characters from his series and Carter Kane and some characters from his series, and they kind of meet and it, it, it really shows some of the interesting differences between the two because in the Percy Jackson series you're dealing with Greek gods and in the Kang Chronicles you're dealing with Egyptian gods. And... These guys all live in the same universe, so it is interesting to see them meet and how that kind of plays out. It's like three mini stories, and I just really enjoyed getting this look into their meeting and their relationships and how that kind of played out. And the story that Rick Riordan decided to tell between these two series and kind of how he matched them up. Really, really enjoyable companion novel. Really excited that I finally read it. And yeah, it was just, it was nice seeing these kind of two different series come together and create a new story for fans of one and or both. And then the last book I'm going to mention is The Marvelers by Danielle Clayton. And I gave this book four and a half stars. So this is a book that has like a magical school. And we're following Ella, who is going to be the first person with conjurer magic to attend the school. So normally it is a school for Marvelers, and this is going to be a new thing where they allow uh, conjurers to attend. And it's not easy. It's not easy being the first person to do this, and it, she's struggling because her magic is different from Marvel magic. And unfortunately, while she's there, a very famous criminal ends up kind of breaking out of jail, and it looks like conjurers might have helped her do it. And that brings a lot of suspicion and hate on to Ella, and she has to kind of survive that well, like I said, being in a new environment, learning new magic, and kind of um, trying to navigate the fact that not everybody really wanted her there even before this criminal broke out. And it certainly does not get better when conjurers are suspected of being involved. So I really enjoyed the series. I enjoyed getting to learn about the different kinds of magic. I'm hoping we get to see more of that in book two. I liked getting to see Ella form relationships, both good and bad, because like I said, there are some people who are accepting and open and willing to give her a shot and learn more about her. And then there are people who are just like, nope, she's a conjurer. I don't want anything to do with her. So it is interesting to see that kind of play out and how she kind of has to navigate that. And then on top of that, having this criminal breakout and how that changes things partway through the book. I just... I really, really enjoyed the start to the series. I think it could be a really fun kind of magical school setting series going forward. It just, it really intrigued me. It really drew me in. Once I picked it up, I didn't want to put it down. The reason it didn't get five stars is because I just, I wanted to know more about the magic. And I think that that will come in subsequent books. So I could totally see future books getting five stars, but I think I just, I wanted a little bit more of that and it would have gotten five stars, but four and a half is nothing to scoff at. I really enjoyed this book and I'm very happy to have a new series to look forward to and new magic to learn about. So that's it. Those are my top five books of April. Lots of nonfiction this month. Very, very surprising, but yeah, an, an interesting month for sure. Really enjoyed what I read. Four or five stars is 
pretty awesome and a four and a half is nothing to sneeze at like i said it was just missing that one thing that would have ticked it up to five stars but yeah those are my top five books of april what was your favorite book that you read in the month of april let me know in the comment section below if you've made it this far in the video leave me dinosaur emojis like this video and subscribe to my channel and i'll talk to you next time bye